Hello everybody and to those new to the channel my name is Pixie and I along with a group of talented artists and musicians are currently in the process of making a demake of Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the Mega Drive. I recently released an update video of the project along with some ROMs, some demos for you to play with so I won't talk too much about the Castlevania game here. What I want to show in this video are all the other games that other people have been developing over the past year and are expected to continue to develop into 2023. I released a similar video at the same time last year where I did all the games in development in 2022 but despite my best efforts I did end up missing a few including the excellent Cursed Knight whose music you've been listening to since the beginning of the video. While I've tried my best not to miss out on any new games this year I'm sure I've missed a couple so if I have then just please leave a comment in the comment section. Now whenever anyone does a video like this showcasing new Mega Drive and Genesis games the question always comes up why does Sega's 16-bit console have so many games compared to other systems of the era? One of the main reasons is the SGDK, the Sega Genesis Development Kit. This makes it so much easier to create games for the Mega Drive than for say the Super Nintendo or even the Mega CD and the 32X which the development kit unfortunately doesn't support just yet. I would include a link to the SGDK Patreon page for those of you who want to support continued development of this kit and for those of you who watch this video and are inspired to create maybe your own Mega Drive games as a new hobby in 2023 then I would also include a link to my videos, my tutorial series where I teach you how to make your own Mega Drive games and create graphics for the system and so on. Okay without further ado let's now talk about the new Mega Drive games in development for 2023. While we did have a great variety of games last year, one genre which was missing was the side-scrolling beat-em-up or the brawler or the belt scroller, however you want to call it. Well, I'm glad to say that that's certainly not the case this year as we have several games of this type and what better way to start off the video than with a classic of the genre, Final Fight. I know that the Super Nintendo port of the game tends to get lots of criticism these days and to be fair it was missing a lot of content but while I can't speak for all Mega Drive owners I know that I personally was very jealous of the game. Thankfully Sega were wise enough to give us Streets of Rage around the same time plus of course for those of us who were lucky enough to, earn a to own a Mega CD at the time we got a great port of the game on there too. But that said it was still a great surprise when earlier this year this Mega Drive version popped up. With this version it has all the cutscenes that the arcade version has and it also has the some arcade graphics which are even missing from the Mega CD game. It also has all three playable characters and not only does it have a two player but in the past I know that the developers were even experimenting with a three player mode but I'm not sure if that's going to make it into the final version but it was an interesting experiment nonetheless. There are so many small little details that the developers have really paid attention to and it shows that they really have a, a great love for this game and that their heart's really in the project. For example in the Mega CD version one of the little things that bugged me a bit was this uh, survival mode here. It's nothing wrong with the survival mode itself and I really like the graphics, the background's very beautiful but the problem was it was very static, the cars didn't move in the background and I don't think it that kind of spoiled the effect whereas in this version here they've put, I guess they've put sprites in to, to create the movement of the cars and it just makes the whole scene look much more dynamic. The only weird thing is the cars seem to be driving on the left hand side and I always assumed that Metro City was in the US somewhere so I'm not sure maybe this takes place in the UK or Japan but it doesn't look like a UK cityscape to me but um, I, I hear that the developers are Brazilian so do you guys drive on the right or the left hand side? It's funny looking back on that footage on the bridge, I remember when I was playing it that I thought it was a bit unfair that I got beaten so badly but then I think in the arcade version it was a bit of a what they call like a quarter muncher so uh, I think the probably AI in the game in the original was probably like that too and I'm just uh, remembering it with rose tinted uh, spectacles. I think the game overall is looking really polished so far and there's obviously lots of talent behind it. Um, you might notice some sprite flicker here and there but given the size of the sprites and how many characters are on the screen it's really pretty much unavoidable because the Mega Drive horizontally can only display 20 sprites at the same time on any horizontal line and given the size of the characters a lot of them make up more than one sprite so with all the weapons too and the breakable crates I think it's inevitable that you're going to get some kind of sprite flicker but apart from that it's looking great. 
I said at the beginning of the video that we had a few uh, side-scrolling beat-em-up games this year, so let's take a look at what I assume is an original IP from Seibu Team. While this one is obviously in a much earlier stage of development than the Final Fight port, I think given the attractive character design and the graphics, I think it looks pretty nice, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this one develops in the future. And as with Final Fight and all the other games in this video, I'll include links to the creators' websites in the video description. For the next video, we have another port of a Capcom beat-em-up classic, Cadillac and Dinosaurs. While we did get a Cadillac and Dinosaurs game on the Mega CD, unfortunately rather than just using the Final fight Fighting Engine they already had on the system to create a conversion of the arcade game, they gave us this weird FMV game instead, so I was really happy to see this being converted to the Mega Drive. Just like the previous game and unlike Final Fight, this is definitely still in a relatively early level of development. It has a lot of content, you see all the, the plastic screens there, it looks really great and uh, you have all the characters you can choose from, plus you seem to have a few levels too, but there's uh, quite a few glitches and obviously you know where, <laughs> where she's walking right now and uh, the enemy doesn't seem too bad, you still attack them, you can have a bit of fun with it. So. Uh, the colours are still a bit off in some places, but with especially with some enemies, but I'm pretty optimistic about this one. It looks like they're getting a hang of it, and it looks like if, this, if they pull this off, then this will be amazing to have Cadillac and Dinosaurs on a home console finally, because I don't think it got a port to any console, not even the PlayStation or the Saturn. Don't worry, despite what appearances may suggest, I'm not going to show you yet another arcade conversion of a beat-em-up game. Although the programmer called Format C did do some work on this earlier in the year, he's actually switched to another project, a Neo Geo arcade game. Interestingly enough, this 1994 Neo Geo game recently, just in 2022, got a sequel from .mu, the same people who made Streets of Rage 4, so it's great to see this conversion on the Mega Drive. For this game, Format C has teamed up with Pyron, which is why the colours and the graphics look as great as they do. As you can see, the gameplay and the animations and everything already look really good, so I think this is already quite far along and it's looking great so far and I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product. Astabros. Many of you will remember a very impressive Mega Drive game from a couple of years ago from a French developer team called Neofid. That game was called Demons of Asterberg and that team has now created another game in the same universe, a game that they describe as a roguelite multiplayer game with randomly generated dungeons. It had a very successful Kickstarter campaign in 2022, getting over 100,000 euros and it's looking great so far. The graphics are looking as polished as the last one and I think they can really build off their previous work on the, on the other game, the first game, and they can continue to build up the universe and I'm really looking forward to this one. In last year's video I featured a game from Kaya Magazine Software called Metal Dragon which came out early in 2022 and now the same team has a new game about to be released for the Mega Drive called Life on Mars. Whereas their previous game was an overhead run and gun, this one they describe as a Metroidvania set in space. It's a conversion of a game that was released on the MSX2 and has also been released in Steam and I think the Mega Drive version is looking really great. Those of you who watched last year's video may remember a developer studio called PSCD Games. They always seem to have lots of different projects on the go and last year in addition to many other games they also had a very interesting project to do a demake of Resident Evil on the Mega Drive. While there has been no news on that front, they are de currently developing three games for the Mega Drive and not only the Mega Drive but also the NES, Game Boy and Super Nintendo 2. The first is this Metroidvania game called Mystopia, which seems to be a port of a PC game. They also have this side scrolling shoot em up with some beautiful parallax scrolling. However, the game of theirs that really caught my attention is the next one, Black Jewel Reborn.
They had a puzzle game last year called Bone Marrow, which really impressed me with its kind of medieval Golden Axe-like sprite work. And this has the same effect on me. I really like the character design and the overall presentation of this one. From what I've played of the demo, this seems to be a really fun side-scrolling action platformer. And I really like the small touches, such as you're in the top left hand corner of the screen. Instead of having a life bar, your character has a head where every time she gets hit, she loses a bit of flesh and uh, it eventually turns into like a, a, a skull. I've always been a fan of cool continuous screens and this has a great one. It almost makes you want to die on purpose just to see it. After that kind of violent game, let's have a change of tone with this cutesy Super Nintendo style RPG. One interesting thing about the developers of this game, Second Dimension, is that unlike most of the games on this list, they don't code in SGDK and C programming language, they actually use BASIC. This is another game that had a successful Kickstarter earlier in 2022 and they're also having the musician Inglebard help out who's also working, one of the musicians working on my Castlevania game too. So it's not only going to look great but it's going to sound great as well. While we're on the subject of RPGs, let's take a look at another one. Now this one's called The Viking and the Ninja and it's been in development since 2016. Now this seems to be a one person project, the same person is doing the everything, the sprite work and the programming and just in their spare time and this is another one that's looking really great too. So. Um, a Viking and a Ninja is an interesting concept, apparently it's going to be, actually I'm not sure if it's an actual RPG, they describe it more as like a gauntlet or dungeon explorer style game in an anachronistic fantasy setting with more of a comedic rather than a serious tone. One of the benefits about making a game for a console like the Mega Drive is that it really is a, a realistic prospect to create a game all by yourself. Now it's a lot of hard work but I think there's something very satisfying about having every piece of a game being designed by you only so I wish the um, developer good luck and I hope that we see a finished product one day. We discussed a few side-scrolling brawlers before, now let's move on to one-on-one -on -one fighting games. This is Real Bout Fatal Fury which was released on the Neo Geo and in arcades in 1995 and got a PlayStation and Saturn port but of course never got a Mega Drive port. I have to confess that I've never been the biggest one-on-one -on -one fighting fan because I've never been able to get into it properly. I've managed to get into the Street Fighter series a little bit but never any of the Neo Geo games but as far as I can tell this is looking really great so far. I've always loved the backgrounds in these kind of games and the characters too and the animation looks great and the the fighting looks very fluid so I think that fans of this game are going to be very happy with this port. Some of you may recognize Davila Games from last year's video where they were doing a port of Street Fighter Zero for the Mega Drive. That project did receive an update in 2022 so as far as I know they are still working on that port but they've also been working on this unique one-on-one -on -one fighting IP, Lunatic Fighters. The name and the art direction of the game does remind me of another game from last year by a different developer called Insane Pain and Insane Pain did actually recently get a release so it was completed and you can that's available for you to buy. I'd be really interested to learn how they create the character models and also the backgrounds because a lot of it looks pre-rendered and it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. I'm not sure how to do it as opposed to Sprout Work, what programs they use and so on. So hopefully one day they might do some kind of developer's diary where they uh, reveal their secrets. But it's an interesting style, it's a very popular style in the uh, mid 90s and so I think it really fits into that kind of era of games. 
Given their disclaimers they have at the beginning of this one, it does seem to be based on a number of different properties. I recognize a bit of Double Dragon, also a River City Ransom, so uh, this looks very nice actually. They've, it looks like they've mashed lots of different fighters together into this game, but it looks very polished. The presentation is very good, the animation is very smooth, and it's, they seem to have done a good job putting this together. Unfortunately, to try to pronounce the name of either the developer or the name of the game itself are way beyond my language abilities, but as always, there will be a link to the creator's YouTube channel or social media in the video description, so be sure to check it out if you're interested. Just a few games ago we had Lunatic Fighters and now to finish off the one on one fighting section of this year's video we have Dino Fighters. This is another Brazilian developer, in fact I think over half the games featured today are by Brazilian developers, they really are a Mega Drive homebrew superpower. And someone might tell me this is maybe from a Brazilian cartoon but as far as I know this is a unique IP that the creators designed for themselves and it's looking really nice. It's really like nice graphics and animation and they've even got, looks like they've got combos in too and so I'm definitely going to keep mine. This one is, uh, it's like a, there was a game called Primal Rage in the mid 90s and this is like a cute cartoon version of that. This wouldn't be a new Mega Drive games video without a decent number of shoot 'em ups, so let's go on to that genre now. And I'm going to start off, which might be simultaneously the most interesting and also the least interesting game in this video. That's because for this particular game, all we have to go on are a few tweets and a couple of screenshots, but the important thing is the person writing the tweets. Now, I'm sure this gentleman, Yuzo Kishiro, no, needs no introduction to the people watching this video. If anyone needs a hint or reminder, just listen to the music playing in the background and I'm sure you'll guess it. In these tweets, he confirms that he's making a new Mega Drive game and he's going to be not only making the music, which is great because it'd be great to get a new Yuzo Kishiro soundtrack in 2023 or 2024 whenever it eventually does release, but he's also taking over as the game designer for this game as well, which he said is his first time since he did Beyond Oasis on the Mega Drive. He said it's not just himself alone, but his company Ancient, which are doing the game. And he also pretty much confirmed that the programmer for the project is going to be using the SGDK, the development kit for the Mega Drive that I mentioned earlier. So it's really great that right now it's not just amateurs like myself who are producing new Mega Drive games and playing around with SGDK, but it's also the professionals who made games back in the 90s when the console was commercially sold that are also starting to use SCGDK and are also starting to make new games now so uh, today is Yuzo, this year is Yuzo Koshiro, who knows in the future who else would start making games too. He also said that the game will be for sale and they're thinking about making a cartridge and I'll Given his connections with Sega, it'll be interesting to see whether he can get an official release. It'll be really crazy to have an official Mega Drive cartridge release after all these years, but if anyone can do it, he can, but he might go the route of lots of independent developers and just release it himself, who knows. I already said that Yuzo Koshiro was a person that needed no introduction, and this is probably a shoot 'em up that needs no introduction, it's R-Type. While well, R-Type did get a very good Master System port and of course uh, Super Nintendo fans they got Super R-Type but it was never released for the Mega Drive so I'm very glad that the Italian developer, not Brazilian this time, is finally making a Mega Drive version of the game. Both the graphics and the music are really good so far plus there's plenty of gameplay to be seen so this is another project that I have high hopes for. We saw this developer, Davila Games, earlier when we talked about the Street Fighter Zero port and also the Insane Fighters game and, oh sorry, Lunatic Fighters, not Insane Fighters. Well, the same developer has somehow found time to make a shoot 'em up too. This is True Galactic Mission.
Let's take a look at what you could call a running gun, I suppose, a platformer and another arcade conversion. This time it's Robocop. Released in arcades in 1988 and of course based on the classic 1987 film, this did get a lot of computer ports back in the day, but I don't think it saw much action on the console, certainly not the Mega Drive. Although it's early days, the graphics and the music are both looking good so far. Next we move on to some ports of modern day indie games. In last year's video we featured a game called Rocket Panda made by Space Pants Games and the same developer is currently developing two ports of indie titles. This is the first one, it's called Gunslugs. The second game is called Heroes of Loot and just like the first one it has lots of roguelike um, randomly gener generated elements but this time you have more of an overhead view rather than a side scrolling kind of run and gun view. One of the interesting things about this developer is unlike most of the um, games featured in this video they actually decide to use good old fashioned assembly to code their games rather than SGDK and C language. The next game is particularly interesting because it's actually a sequel to an NES game. Now this NES game was called Slow Mole and it was released uh, a year or two ago and this is a sequel to that game for the Mega Drive called Mega Slow Mole. As you can probably tell from the gameplay footage, this is one of those platform games that you kind of almost have to speedrun it. Speedrunning is part of the gameplay itself because you have to be constantly on the move and the gameplay is the environment's always changing like this part with the blocks which are being uh, melted away by the acid and are you standing on them you can't just hang around so it's definitely a challenging game but it also looks a lot of fun too. Sega. I introduced a bunch of 101 fighter games earlier but we have one more to look at in this video and that is Darkstalkers. Now the developer of this one and I'll link their channel in the video description so you can check them out was actually someone who's been following my tutorials in 2022. Now to begin with they wanted to do a port of the uh, Willow game, the arcade Willow game to the Mega Drive and they also had an idea of doing a Metroid game on the Mega Drive. Now both of those games are featured on their channel so I'll let you check those out and but in the end they decided to go with this Darkstalkers port. They already have lots of characters in the game and a lot of the animation is already there and lots of the backgrounds are already there and the colours and the music are both uh, really good so far. Choosing your first big project as a beginner's game developer is always difficult, especially when you're doing a game for a retro console like the Mega Drive. Each type of game brings its own challenges, so for example with a traditional platforming game you have the big sprawling levels with level collision and multiple enemies and so on. With a one-on-one -on -one fighter game like this, I think probably the biggest challenges are one, the controls, because there's lots of combinations and so on that you have to pull off the moves, and that's much more sophisticated than in a regular platform game. And also, of course, the enemy AI, which has to react to the player's um, moves in a way that's not frustrating, it's actually fun to play. So it's a difficult project, but I'm sure that the, the developer is going to do a great job. And I hope that next year I'll be able to feature even more people who have started doing the tutorials and are ready to show their own projects too. I'm going to start talking about some really interesting ROM hacks that have been in development because sometimes ROM hacks can almost feel like a completely different game if they're done very well. And I'm also going to give an update on some of the games I featured in last year's video. But before we do, let's look at the last new game for this year. And that's going to be this one here, which is more of a, a first person shooter. Now, lots of people, when I'm doing the um, the D make of Castlevania Symphony after the Mega Drive. Doing a 32-bit game on a 16-bit console sounds very difficult, but it is at its heart still a 2D platformer, which the Mega Drive does very well, but doing something like this, uh, a first-person shooter type uh, game with textures and stairs and scaling enemies, this takes real coding skill, which I don't have at the moment. So I really admire this effort here, and it's looks like it's gonna be a great game too. Okay, for the first of our ROM hacks, we have this one by Pyron. This game actually got a very good port back in the early life of the Mega Drive and the box art for the Genesis version of the game actually even boasted about its 8 Mega memory, which was of course a, a big cartridge for that time. 
Of course, even that amount of memory wasn't enough to contain all of the arcade assets and things had to be cut, so Pyron's uh, ROM hack here is aimed at putting some of those graphical assets and other things back into the game. It's all shaping up to be amazing so far and I'm looking forward to playing an even better version of an already great game. Another of the early Mega Drive games that I really enjoyed playing was Ghostbusters. Again, due to the relatively small cart sizes of the time, some things had to be cut and in this case, Paul Winston got the chop. The main aim of this ROM hack is to rectify that and now Winston is in the game. For the third and final ROM hack of this video, we're going to take a look at another early port of a Capcom arcade game for the Mega Drive, Ghouls and Ghosts. Just as with Strider, this was actually a very good port for its time, but due to its very small cartridge size, it did suffer a lot of cutbacks from the arcade edition. Thankfully, Amaru's been busy at work doing a hack where he's going to put all those arcade assets back into the game, and as you can see on your screen right now, it's looking absolutely fantastic. It really is a night and day difference from the Mega Drive original. I will include a link to his YouTube channel as always, and I especially recommend this one because as well as just showcasing his uh, game, this ROM hack, he also goes into detail about the Mega Drive hardware and how he's achieving all those effects and so on, so it's especially interesting to anyone who wants to understand how these kind of things are done and how the Mega Drive hardware works. Okay, let's finish off this video by having an update on some of the games featured in last year's video. I've already mentioned games such as Insane Pain and Metal Dragon and so on in the video, so for now I want to talk about some other games, for example this shooter, Arena Genesis Metal Fury. This had a successful Kickstarter and the last update was in November where they say they're working on stages 4 and 5, so it looks like development is going smoothly. I'm not sure if this will be out in 2023 or not, but it looks looking great so far, so this is one I'm particularly looking forward to. I also featured another shooter which had a really incredible art style called ZPF. While things have been a bit more quieter on the update front for this game, it does seem that this might be going to a Kickstarter sometime in early 2023, so I'll definitely recommend that everyone pays attention to that and, and back it if they can because it really looks incredible. I also featured someone called Greg Gallardo who has continued to experiment with his light gun game. So this is using the Menacer light gun which is pretty unique and fortunately SGDK supports it. Meanwhile AAR completed his shoot em up which is available for download on a donation basis. A game that was already looking super polished last year was Mega Man The Sequel Was. Now you might remember we had Mega Man The Wily Was which was a Mega Drive remake of the first three NES games and that was released in the 90s. This is a sequel to that game and this remakes the next three NES Mega Man games and is looking absolutely amazing. Viewers of last year's video may recall that we had not just one, but two Metal Slug games in development for the Mega Drive. At least one of those is still in development and has shown a lot of progress so far and it seems it's not just been released for the Mega Drive, but also for the Atari ST as well, but of course it's the Mega Drive version that we're focused on today. There's so much animation in this game and so much going on screen at the same time, being a run and gun, but the Mega Drive's handling it like a champ, so Props to the programmer and it seems to be a great port so far and I'm looking forward to seeing how this progresses further in 2023. As for the other games, just because a game hasn't been updated in the past year doesn't necessarily mean it's been abandoned. Most of these projects are kind of hobbyist projects that people do in their spare time, so sometimes people need to stop for a year or they do work on it but don't 
update it on their social media or anything so hopefully we'll hear from some of the others next year and while we're talking about projects that may or not be abandoned i suppose i should talk about one of my own projects that's been very quiet in 2022 and that's the gg shinobi which is a mega drive remake of the excellent game gear game now this is i haven't given up on this one but it's just with the tutorials and with doing the Chinese version of the channel and also with doing Castlevania Symphony of the Night I've and with a full-time job and all other hobbies and so on uh, I've just been a bit too busy to work on it too much but all the stuff I'm learning from Castlevania Symphony of the Night from programming that is helping with this because I am just a beginner game maker after all so maybe not in 2023 but at least in 2024 I hope to continue to work on GG Shinobi because it's a project I'm very passionate about so I will get back to it eventually so Shinobi fans don't worry hopefully we'll have an update again one day. Now this might sound like a natural place to end the video and I was intending to end it here but at the last minute I got two new entries for new Mega Drive games so this first one probably needs no introduction is the Simpsons arcade game. This game gives me a triple nostalgic hit, first for The Simpsons which of course was massive in the 90s and I was quite surprised to learn it's actually still going today, I don't know if the episodes today are any good but in the 90s it was really top quality and even if you go and watch them now uh, I think the writing still holds up, it really was a great show. The second hit from nostalgia comes from the fact that for most of us the only place we could play this was in the arcades which are unfortunately very rare these days. Although the game did get some ports as home computers for example the Commodore 64 there was some kind of legal wrangling with the IP rights where, which meant that unfortunately it never got a console version on the Super Nintendo or Mega Drive. And of course the third hit of nostalgia comes from the fact that I'm playing this on the Mega Drive. And as you can see from all the footage this game was actually very well suited to the console and it would, I'm sure it would have got a great Super Nintendo port too. While I was aware of this game the reason I did, wasn't going to feature it in this video was because I assumed that it was very very early stages and there was nothing much to show but fortunately the last minute one of the creators sent me through a ROM to play and as you can see it's actually quite far along with lots of animation and uh, anime AI and you can attack them and get damaged and die and lose a life and so on and Eason has the little touches for example if you get too close to the doors Bart or Homer or whoever the, the person is gets whacked which I always love from the arcade. As with most of the games featured today there's still a lot of work to do but I think everyone would agree that this is still a very exciting project nonetheless. I began today by saying how in last year's video I forgot to mention the Cursed Knight and funnily enough in this year's video I almost forgot to mention this game which is by the same developer, the Cursed Legacy. I think it's really great that we're seeing these type of developers and that goes for the makers of Demons of Asterberg 2 already on their second generation of Mega Drive games. It just means that they're already very familiar with the hardware, they're more experienced and the first games that these guys made were great and I'm really looking forward to how the sequels work out too. Okay so that really is it for this year's video, thanks so much for watching. Please check out all the links in the video description and give the creators of these projects all the support you can. I would also include a link to the SGDK Patreon account so that's a really great way to say thank you to the creator of SGDK that makes so many of these projects possible and also to help fund further development of the development kits so we get even better games in the future. If you're interested in keeping tabs on the Castlevania Symphony of the Night that you make for the Mega Drive then please subscribe to my channel and as I said before I will also have tutorials as well throughout 2023 so anyone interested in learning how to make Mega Drive games you can check those out. Until next time, farewell.